knowing that that has been the fulcrum, I will say, for what is going on in the shadows regarding the insecurity. All the criminals and all the people going around causing mayhem in the southeast have all said that it is because Mazen and the card is being held. We know that this is not the truth. It's just that we have gotten to the point where people are now uh, hijacking a legitimate call for his release and turning it into something that has led to deaths and uh, destruction of properties and uh, so many other undescribable mayhem that is going on in the southeast. And so we came to meet with the Minister of Justice and Attorney General because we know that at the end of the day, Everything that happens in the political and uh, in the legal scheme will eventually come to his office. And we came to appeal to him to uh, help us to let Mr. President know that all leaders of the Southeast feel that the release of Mazen Namdi Kano will help in dousing all the tensions and everything that is going on in the southeast. And we are very, very certain that his duty as the Attorney General also gives him the powers of knowledge prosecute, the powers of uh, making sure that litigation don't continue and the sufferings of the people of the southeast continue. That is the essence of why we came here. And I think you know also, I think it's also clear that several different groups in the South, including the Southeast Governors of the have all been making exactly the same type of plea. We think that this will help us to bring to an end all the insecurity. Has this a caucus met with Mr. Kano? to know whether you'll be willing to accept either conditional release or not. Yes, the, on behalf of the... I met with Nam the Kano myself uh, on behalf of the rest of the caucus on Monday. Today is Wednesday. Yes, sir. We met with him between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. on Monday. And he is very, very supportive of this hour. Uh, plea to the president uh, of, uh, uh, of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Maybe last week, you were Bishop Swati among the first trial. Yes. In case you need a senator to be a Swati this time around, would you be willing to stand? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that that is necessary to ask. We came here on his behalf, and that tells you that any of our senators that you see, the 15 of us, by the way, the 15 of us signed this uh, letter. Um, a few of us are not here just for reasons um, of the logistics and all that. Some are also not. But we all signed the letter, and you will also have a copy of the letters. Like so any senator in the South is very willing. The governors are willing. The um, uh, business leaders are willing. The uh, clergy, they are willing. So the, the traditional rulers are also willing. So I do not think that anything will stop us if it comes to that. And he has also assured me that he is ready to fulfill any conditions that are uh, put that will lead to his uh, early release. So, 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 so. Very warmly, and also told us that, of course, this is a request for which he has to go and, uh, and, and study it, I guess, it and take to the president because he, he won't take the ultimate decision. I think it's a decision of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So, so last year, I don't know if asked you because I think it's, what is your appeal to the president's record of the very case? The appeal is that this matter cannot be resolved legally. And if we continue with the um, legal wrangling, that it will continue to cause the 
uh, insecurities because the legitimate demands has been hijacked by criminals, undesirables, and all manners of um, elements who have used it to perpetrate their own uh, or nefarious uh, uh, deals on the rest of the people of the Southeast. Nobody in the Southeast likes what is going on. People cannot go out of their houses on Mondays. People are uh, maimed and killed and all that. And some people are roaming around, killing even security men on, on, in the name of uh, looking for the release of Namikano. Namikano himself also confirmed to me last Monday that he never, never made any request of that nature that anybody should go and keep people. In fact, he was very pained that the Southeast is suffering because of this. And he assured me that when the day is out, is also the day that they will now know those who are legitimate agitators and those who are criminal. All right, my wonderful people, welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back-to-back -back updates and information as you do. In case you have not joined our social media and what are you waiting for, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to all your notification buttons so that whenever our news drop, you will be the first. We will collect them. All right, let's go down to the news proper as you do. don't share for the Obuda, I go to bring you the information one by one. Uh, before I go to bring you the things where they happen for the Imo Bodo of Biafra, make I bring you the recent development in India uh, where uh, one for Biafra uh, bagged 25 years jail term in India. And um, I want to use this ample opportunity to tell Umibo, 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 Umibo. Um, it's high time. Uh, Igbo youths and uh, um, Igbo pedalists down because uh, when Chuko Hikabiyama created us at the territory where he put us, the environment, you find out that from the day one, Ndi Igbo we are uh, very creative people. If you go to Ozoka, uh, where they mowed gun, where they mowed gong, and the rest of them, and um, Igbo people were the first to repli uh, replicate exactly what the white man was doing. Uh, in the uh, work of mechanics, uh, welding, and the rest of them, uh, they were not properly schooled, our forefathers. But through what they can see, they were able to learn exactly what the white man was doing. That's why you see a replica of mechanics everywhere. Uh, you see welders, you see this and that, all these things. Nibu we are the first uh, to become the best in it. I think um, it's high time... Um, that the government of Biafra start thinking towards, I don't know if um, they are thinking towards that, uh, how to make education more practical when this freedom is found. Open and water this freedom. Uh, let the Biafra nation do their educational system to be practical. That is one of the advice uh, I will be giving to the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile. Uh, let's let it be a practical system of education go to china go to london you see that these children are practicing uh, there is of course if education with practical makes it easy for someone to be uh, able to understand very well as it is uh, mazina the kind of has said like nelson mandela that he will continue to stand on the on the part of peace and the part of justice, uh, no matter what they are doing to him, uh, that he will continue to stand on the part of justice. And um, uh, we have been hearing Kepu Kepu that cannot have been made some offers. Even he said it with his mouth uh, to let go on this freedom fighting. But him cannot have said uh, until death do him pass that he is not going to betray his people uh, because of uh, peanut. And the, that is why uh, Africa is going backwards, because our leaders have refused to make sacrifice. 
uh, they just want to take the little peanut they are getting from the white man and upon that they are betraying their people which is very wrong and something i do not see as important let's go down uh, to this particular information so that you go see as it is hot remember that still today is july 3rd uh, as it be like mandela nam they kind of stand for truth justice kissman right tinubu Youth of Ibeku ancient kingdom in Omaha, Abia State, kinsman of the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazenam, the Kano have said that Kano, like the late South African leader Nelson Mandela, stands for truth, equity, and justice. The youth, in a letter to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, regretted that Kano's agitation for equity and fairness for all was misconstrued by the previous administration, which decided to cram him into detention instead of addressing the fundamental issues he was raising. Identifying his continued detention despite previous court orders for his unconditional release as the major cause of tension and insecurity in the Southeast. The youth strongly urged the president to consider the growing appeal from across Nigeria for his release. Earlier in a communique after an emergency meeting Tuesday evening at their national secretariat, Iseke Ibeku, the youth argued that Kano was not a terrorist but only worried by the perennial injustice against his people and was crying for equity. The communique signed by their national president, Mr. Martins, Chidozie Nwosu, and Secretary Chibuzo Onwo Kamuche, respectively, urged Tinutupu to free Kano just as the Yoruba Nation's promoter. Sunday Igo and Social Crusader Omole Yosore, also charged for treason, had been freed. It read in part, our brother Mazin and the Kano only stood for truth, equity, and justice for the Igbo tribe and the eastern part of Nigeria. Just like Nelson Mandela, the South Africa hence, his, his incarceration at the Department of the State Service DSS has become bearable to us, his kinsmen and brothers, knowing fully well that the catastrophe, instability and insecurity that Mazina Nikano's detention has brought to the eastern part of the country. Warning politicians against any attempt to politicize the ordeals of Kanu, Ibeki youth appreciate all those genuinely committed to his freedom. They particularly urge the APES Igbo Social Cultural Organization, Ohaneze Ndibo, to caution ex president Aide Reno Omokere, ex presidential aide Reno Omokere, against unguarded utterances and provocative comments on Kanu. We urge politicians not to politicize the detention of our dear brother Mazen and Kanu and to objectively work towards his unconditional release. Um, as it be, uh, there are some comments that have been coming from Reno Omokri recently. Uh, he was going back to some of the comments uh, and some of the broadcasts that were made by Mazen Nandekano out of anger. Um, you know that um, every living being and every human being who is sympathetic enough to understand his environment, um, what is actually happening there, would agree with me that um, Kano was speaking out of anger and out of compassion for his people. Because um, during that time, there were a lot of things that was happening in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Even um, T.Y. Danjuma in his broadcast the other day say that the, the army, the military, are involved in what is in the insecurity that is taking place in this nation. And I begin to wonder, why would the military be part in such a thing? And remember, around last year, there was an article I posted for you, an army accountant general who was accused of amassing billions of dollars. That was meant for procure, uh, procurement of um of materials, war materials, and the rest of them in order to be able to safeguard or protect the people from insecurity. But looking at the scenarios, looking at what is transpiring, what has happened so far, what has taken place, you know, uh, in some times, you you agree with me that there are some things 
uh, 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 that that are going on underground with the military. See why Danjuma said it. He's an ex-military officer. I can play that video video for you if you request it for me. I'll play it for you so that you will be able to you yourself. You will not be a mugu. You will not be a mumu on what is actually happening on this nation. You find that uh, the people who are doing what they are doing actually know what they are doing. It's not as if uh, somebody is telling them to do it, but they actually know what they are doing. But in the bias again, uh, um, let me bring you back to what happened in India uh, with Mafibo, who was caught uh, with a lot of um, uh, illicit drugs. And and he is going for um he's going for twenty five years imprisonment. The National Drug Enforcement Agency announced on Tuesday that Freeman Obuna, a drug trafficker arrested and prosecuted by the agency, has been sentenced to twenty five years imprisonment by a federal high court in Lagos. The NDL is director of media and advocacy Femi Baba Femi disclosed this in a statement on Tuesday. The sentencing occurred three months after Obuna vomited and excreted 80 wraps of cocaine following his arrest at the screening point of the terminal 2 of the uh, Mutala Muhammad International Airport in Ikeja, Lagos. Obuna was arrested on Sunday, March 31st, 2024, while attempting to board a flight to Delhi, India, via Doha on Qatar Airways using a Liberian passport under the name Ka Bishma. The statement stated that a body scan later confirmed he had ingested illicit drugs. The statement said preliminary checks revealed his real identity as Freeman Charles Obuna and he was subsequently placed under observation in the NDLA custody where he, st he started to manifest signs of discomfort. Uh, my people, I don't see as they be. Um, ego parapo parapo. Um, you get this music of a song where you say, um, no, no, go on when you use the law, and I was over time, and I get the law, 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 and I here I go rewind down the curtain, and if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, you can go ahead, subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to on your notification button so that uh, whenever our news is dropping, you will be the first to collect them. Thank you for listening. God bless you plenty.